What is up, people? Welcome back to Demon Souls. Today we are in 4-2 Shrine of Storms, here to kill the old hero and harvest his soul. Let us begin. If you're wondering how I ended up here despite ending the last episode in Stonefang Tunnel, well, basically, I forgot to record for about 20 minutes. So, at least I realized, I guess, you didn't really miss anything, though, other than a few comical deaths. Of which there will be more to come, I am certain. This is a pretty linear level, but it's also brutally hard. Maybe the hardest Dash 2 zone? But we are here to kill the old hero, as his soul is actually of great use to us. We can trade that for the second chance miracle, which, if you've ever played... I mean, you have played Dark Souls 3. Uh, pushed! Instant push! You ever played Dark Souls 3? It's exactly like, what's it called? Tears of Denial? But uh, way more OP. Mantling, save me. Ah. Ridiculous. Basically, if we die, we will automatically resurrect to 50% health as long as second chance is active. We can cast it again if that happens. And uh, it was incredibly meta from what I remember in the PvP side of things. Because it's effectively like an extra life, you know. It is one hell of a crutch. But I have no shame, so we will be eating that up. And that is why we have chosen 4-2 as our first dash 2 zone to explore. Other than 1-2. 1-2 two is more like 1-1 though, right? Because 1-1 is the tutorial after the tutorial. In my opinion, of course. But yeah, uh, Boletarian Palace is the only zone to have... Uh, four uh, parts to it, whereas everything else is three, although it's more like two because, uh, you know, you have two levels and then you have an Archdemon boss fight, which is the center stage of the dash three zones, right? So, whole load of waffle, let's go. This is one tough area and holy shit. Right, I'm actually going to take some advice from one of my viewers here and use some soul remains. I'm going to die though. Yeah. I didn't. I should probably just run past. Crescent isn't really going to cut it, is it? Ugh. Oh. So satisfying. Sit down. Get out of here. Something worth mentioning is I've actually swapped to the thieves ring. Because, um... It's actually just a very useful ring in this zone to prevent these, uh, what are they called? Storm beasts, I think, from just, uh, shooting me and impaling me constantly. I really like this zone, though. It's just very, very tough, and there is no shortcut whatsoever. So if you happen to die to the boss, you will have to do the entire level once again. And it's quite hard to speed run or get around the enemies. This, some fucking bullshit. The way they've placed this guy right on the stairwell to impede your progress. And uh, he does not care about blessed mace damage. You do not. I could have run past there, you know, but I'm going to play it safe because he's shot me in... Pushed! He's shot me in the arse several times before. I won't allow it to happen again. I don't want to get too close, though. That's the thing. I pushed! Well, I died. See ya! My work here is done. You were unable to achieve your goal, Phantom. These skellies are so annoying. No match for the blessed mace though, they do not like blunt damage. So much so that you can actually use your fist. Let me demonstrate that. Let's fist the skeleton, shall we? We don't use this. We will, but not right now. I'm gonna fist the skelly. Right, soul remains. Great. Good throw, my dude. Fuck me. Free aiming in Demon Souls is garbage. Oh. Pretty good damage for barehanded. Right, I'm not sticking around. We have successfully fisted a golden skeleton. Tick that off the bucket list. Oh, this, this is just a sadistic enemy placement. I should block it, yes. Use the shield that you have. Can I please get past? No. 
we're actually getting a lot of... I pushed. We're getting a lot of souls in this area. And what I've noticed about demon souls is... Uh, the dash 1 areas really don't give you much in the way of souls. We're only level 32. I think this is uh, episode number 8. I think you can get to level 32 in Dark Souls 2. In the first area alone. I shouldn't have done that. I was stupid. He's dead though. Must be quick or another will spawn. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, level 32. You just really don't get much in the way of souls in those dash 1 areas. But now that we are in dash 2. Why would you do that? I was next to you, bro. Yeah, the, the dash 2 areas... Um, provide way more in the way of souls. So we should actually get a pretty decent amount of levels for doing this. You fool! You absolute idiot! What an embarrassment you are. Right, we must take care of this guy. Nope! Oh, that would have killed me. You won't be laughing for long, buddy. There we go. He had loads of souls for that, because not only does it kill the Reaper, but also kills all of the, um... I don't even know what they're called. They're like phantoms, I suppose. Hear that giggling? Must be careful here. Where are you at, though? I see ya. She, uh, appears out of nowhere, tries to backstab you. Get out of here. Doesn't actually do much in the way of damage, though. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but I get frame drops on OBS specifically when I load into a new zone. Isn't that fucking crazy? Like, what the hell is causing that? Some kind of, uh... I don't know. I've, I literally have no idea. But I'm going to assume it's the emulator not playing ball with, you know, um, OBS and Cubase, which is what I use for audio. So... Who knows? I hope it doesn't bother you guys too much, though. That's all I can really say. I have spent hours, hours, troubleshooting and getting nowhere. Basically, it just happens from time to time. Seems to be okay today, I guess. But it's specifically... Right, no. Oh. This is a hideous position to be in. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to get, get up in there. This sucks. There, this. Okay, we might be okay. Look at your disgusting, long, gangly finger. Put it away, dude. There we go. That'll do it. Got him. Basically, there'll be no frame drops if I just refuse to die or load into new areas, so... You know, I mean, getting good will help to some extent, at least within the same zone. So fucking weird, though. <laughs> no idea what's going on there. If you happen to have any ideas, then do let me know, right? Right, just experience dips for no reason once again. My only choice is to just stop for a moment until it fixes itself. Honestly, it drives me up the wall. I can only apologize. I hope this episode doesn't amount to 20 minutes of me just complaining. But, you know, I, I'd like to put out footage of a good quality, and if I know that it's dropping frames, it honestly keeps me awake at night, you know. Oh, uh, well, what can you do? What can you do? Right, boss ahead. This guy has a very cool design, but it's pretty simple. He's also blind, so the thieves ring really, really helps here. Legendary soldier's soul. He can uh, hit pretty hard. He can hit you pretty hard, but basically kind of just want to sneak around a little, get a few hits in, and then run away, and then you'll be A-OK. -okay. I don't think I've ever done this without the Thieves' Ring. I do love the design though, man. I think the weapon he uses scales with luck as well. And it's one of the only weapons, if not the only weapon, to actually do that. Might be wrong there. You might be able to see if he took that wrap off of his face, though. There's an idea. St 
Stealth Souls. It's not really Stealth Souls. We haven't quite got there just yet. You wait till uh, Dragon God. My God, what a terrible boss fight. Okay, I think we found someone that's magic resistant. <laughs> Wait, did we? I'm over here, you dummy. Well, we can get this done. But it might take a while. You mad? He's upset. Seriously, bro, take the blindfold off. You might have more of a chance of hitting me. I'm between your legs, you dummy. Oh yeah, I should mention we're going to do the um, the Archdemon of this zone as well, because there's no reason not to. There is no reason. After a trip back to the Nexus to kill ourselves, we might as well just do Storm King as well. Get that Storm Ruler, you know. AoE. Nice. Slapped, I'm behind you. Maybe this weapon is just, I mean, it doesn't do crazy damage as is, but like 60 a hit two-handed, that does, oh, 84. Doesn't seem a lot, you know. Uh, 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 uh. He does stagger quite easily. Yeah, as I've said, holy crap. As I've said before, the bosses are quite creative and they were just experimenting because they didn't really have a template prior to this game for the sort of bosses they were going to make so this guy's kind of got a gimmick to it where you can sneak around I remember back in the day reading that a lot of people struggled with this dude fuck the damage but uh, I've, ne I've never struggled that might just be down to using the thief's ring ha 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 He does hit hard. Damage is just wacky in Demon Souls. There are some attacks in this game that are just like, why does that do as much damage as it does? I am still quite low level though. I need to remember that. I will be surprised if we don't see any kind of rebalancing in the remake. Because some stuff is just fucky, dude. Uh, 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 uh. In the arse. You missed. Old hero, more like old zero. Got him. Who are you? Who are you? You're a nobody, buddy. Also, he gets staggered really easily. Wow. Done, and the frame rate dies. Great. Imagine if he just did an AoE on death. Played a game like that recently where the bosses would actually damage you whilst they were dying. What was it? Bloodstained, I think? Which is really interesting, but can feel like complete bullshit at the time. Holy shit. We got a lot of souls. And the frame rate's had enough. I wonder if that's because it's loading in a new zone. We could just run through here and do Storm King. I don't think I'll die. But just in case, because we will ruin uh, tendency events otherwise. Yeah, Shrine of Storms is... Wait, is it white? No, I don't think so. Did I fuck it up by killing that red phantom by um, Sage Freck? No, it wasn't. It was Saint Urbane. I think I might have fucked it in Shrine of Storms. Whoops. I'll have to double check. But uh, yeah, if you look at Shrine of Storms, it ain't nowhere near as white as Boletarian Palace. And it should be because I've killed two bosses. But again, it's hard to tell. This system is just fucking obtuse and required way more of an explanation than the one we got. And I'm almost certain it will get a better explanation in the remake. Something I didn't point out in my remake video. The first five seconds of that trailer shows the uh the uh player character mantling or vaulting whatever you want to call it over a fence right 
in the tutorial area. So they've actually gone the extra mile there and explained... Well, they haven't explained. They show, they don't tell. But essentially, you will learn that that is a feature in the very first area of the Demon Souls remake. And that's something that I've actually criticized this game for, that there is an entire, like, you know, vaulting mechanic that has no explanation and only shows up in particular spots and they are few and far between whereas the remake has opted to you know put that part in the tutorial so that you realize that is something that you can do which is good good design so that leads me to believe that other things will get more of an explanation whether it's just more notes or you know maybe the the ui and just i don't know there could be a hint system or something who knows we don't know how they're going to handle it but um they will explain world tendency better. They they must do. There's no way they won't, dude. It's so confusing. Even now, I'm still a little bit like... Wait, that dropped my tendency? It's just really fucking weird, dude. Right, let's level up and kill ourselves. One, two, three. Right, that will allow us to cast second chance. It's quite expensive on the old MP. And I believe 18 is the minimum that we need. So as for the rest of the souls, I think we could do with a bit more health now. And a bit more end. And probably, probably next batch want to pump into faith. Wait, do I even have enough faith to cast second chance? Well, might have fucked it there. Who knows? Right, time to kill ourselves. I guess we'll find out. Wait, I can find out now. What am I doing? I don't have enough... Oh, there we go. What? There we go. Okay. God. God. Okay. Got him. Basically, we can now survive death. Obviously, it won't prevent you from dying from a fall. But otherwise, you know, if we happen to lose all of our health, we will instantly revive with 50% of our HP, which is crazy. And like I've said, there are similar spells slash miracles in the other souls games but they've definitely been balanced better like tears of denial i believe revives you with one hp uh so you know i believe the the pvp strat to deal with that was uh you know if you had uh something of the knight of thorns set the armor of thorns set sorry basically you could just roll into an opponent that had just rezzed and kill them by rolling because it only required one damage. So basically what I'm trying to say is that they've balanced it a lot better since Demon Souls. And you can say that about a lot of aspects of this game. It's very ambitious. There's a lot of cool stuff here and a lot of stuff that's been iterated on in the sequels. But definitely tightened up and balanced a bit better. Magic has consistently been nerfed over the course of the series. Like it is ridiculous in Demon Souls. Dark Souls 1 it is pretty strong still. Dark Souls 2 is pretty strong, I would say, but it takes a while to get to that level. It also gives you the most amount of options, which is awesome. And Dark Souls 3, I just did not care to play a spellcaster, really. Me and, uh, I think I've explained this before, but me and the singer of my band, we did a dual mage playthrough of Dark Souls 3, and we just found that our builds were basically the same down to the gear and rings we were using, because if you didn't take advantage of those... Uh, you were way worse off, right? So you have to wear that stupid dust crown. You have to wear the rings that give you extra slots and, you know, extra car speed. So it just funnels you into this one specific build. And I don't like that. Whereas Dark Souls 2 is like, here, here's all this cool shit. You get to decide what you want to do with it. I don't know how I got into the topic of Dark Souls 2 and 3 and magic, but whatever. Right. Storm King it is. King of the Storm. What did this say? Archstone of the demon old hero. After purification, hero's remains are offered to the Storm King. His wings cover the sky and he is accompanied by storm beasts. Right, once again, Thieves Ring will do well here. This is a novelty fight as the archdemons typically are. Frames haven't died, that's good. What the fuck? Who the hell knows, dude? If you've, uh, if you've not played Demon Souls, but you've played Dark Souls 3... This is the origin of the Storm Ruler sword. Because how else are you going to kill this thing? You can actually shoot him with arrows. It takes ages. It's not very fun. 
You cannot deny From Software's ambition with this game. They were aiming for the sky and beyond, dude. And, uh, you know, not everything works, but I still think this is just such a good game, dude. And still has some of the very best level design in the series, if you ask me. Latria, dude. Latria. Storm King. You'll probably be very confused when you first come here. Newman Grass. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do? I think there's one spot where you can... Not... Fuck! There's one spot where you can cheese the Storm King. Oh, well, it's not cheese. Lizard! This is how you get a pure Dark Moon Stone. Not that I need one, but you want to take advantage of these if you're a mage. Withdraw the sword. Storm Ruler. Right. Uh, he won't actually appear until you clear out a number of the Storm Beasts in the sky. My regen ain't doing shit right now, you know. Right, I think this is the spot. Or maybe I've come here too early. But basically, we need to equip this anyway. Imagine if it was like, you do not have the stats to wield this. You're fucked. You can't beat this boss. Just kill yourself. There it is. Now, buddy. Slapped with the wind, the power of the storms. I gotta say, it was, uh, it was a very pleasant surprise seeing this sword reappear in Dark Souls 3. That was like fan service done right. Because it's not often the series pays homage to Demon Souls. Well, it is and it isn't. Not as much as like... Well, if we're talking specifically Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3 pretty much pretends Dark Souls 2 doesn't exist. But I believe Dark Souls 2 itself has a number of references to Demon Souls or kind of concepts and stuff that they've revisited. But that's just something they do. There he is, the big boy himself. Big boy in the sky. You're going to fire a shitload of things. Is it here that I have to stand? Well, that fucking hurt. Okay. Now you get yours, buddy. Everybody gets one, and I missed. Crap. There we go. So, I get what they were going for here. This is like a... epic fight with a mythical sky beast, right? But it just doesn't play very well. <laughs> Basically, he's going to do a few loops and we stand here. Yeah, he's out of range. We stand here and we wait for him to come back around. Until he is dead and avoid his projectiles. And you love that image of the adjudicator on my shield, dude. He looks so fucking stupid. Okay, um, I think it's, yeah, we need to be slightly further up, I think, like here, to avoid his bullshit, yeah, there we go, fuck me, that nearly killed me, can't even really see what's hitting me there, nice, and once more, rinse and repeat next loop, it's all over, pretty simple stuff, not exactly fun. Well, it's, it's creative. I'll give him that. wonder if I can clip his wing from here. Nah. It's just, it, yeah, like, it doesn't play very well. It's a little bit uninteresting. I appreciate the scale of it, though. I do wonder if, uh, if the Demon Souls remake is going to feel a bit dated, given how far the series has come since Demon Souls. Is it going to be weird to go back to real simple boss fights and limited move sets with a fresh coat of paint you know because it's going to be the best looking souls game but i just think it might be a bit jarring compared to something like dark souls 3 where you know bosses have two or three phases 
and you come into Demon Souls and some of the fights literally boil down to standing behind rocks until you have an opportunity to hit someone. I don't know why the trophy thing is there. I'm pretty sure I turned that shit off. We got the trophy. Do do swimming in souls, dude. Could loot the area, don't really care to. We'll get the soul and we'll say goodbye. You've obtained the soul of an archdemon. The thick colorless fog shall oppress you no more. What that means is we can now go to 1-3 and 1-4. Uh, however, we will be saving that till we've done everything else because I consider them to be end game, And they're also quite hard areas, so... Yeah, anyway, the frame rate died again. I'm glad it died after the boss fight, but holy shit, is that annoying. Um, we'll level up next time. Anyway, I just want to say thank you for watching as always. I'm glad a number of you are enjoying the series. I'm enjoying this game. I'm enjoying talking to all of you guys, and I enjoy the fact that some of you cared to listen to me talk a whole bunch of shit and whine and complain about pushing, accidental pushing. God, does that get annoying. That's a me problem though, man. That's my Xbox 360 controller. Never had that issue on PS3, but I think I'm just going to deal with it because it's quite amusing. Anyway, enough rambling. Until the next time, Demon Slayers. See ya in episode number, I can't remember, nine? Maybe it might be nine. Post Andrew can fix it if not. Anyway, goodbye guys. You know what to do. Bang your heads. See you next time. Bye.